Hello world, my name is Tim Rosswick and I'm developer of Cypherpunk, a hacking stealth roguelike. And today I'm going to show you the progress that we made on the project and kind of how uh, I'm building this out to be something I'm proud of and something that's really, really interesting. Uh, my design goals with this project is to make something that's accessible and, and easy to play, but at the same time really, really deep. I enjoy a lot of roguelikes, but they are confusing as shit for me because there's just so much there and a lot of time they're ASCII graphics and stuff like that and it's really, really hard to learn. So I want to make something that's a little more simpler to play and easy to play and so um that's that was kind of the goal and that's that's kind of what i'm i'm working on this week is again making the game easier to play and easier to understand um a big theme for this week was the view ranges for the enemies uh so as you can see when we left off last week we ended up with these uh uh pink squares they changed to yellow because i was kind of going back and forth on like whether or not they should be there Another thing to notice is this threat level up in the top right. Uh, we switched it to work on siphoning, which is how you grab resources rather than how, whether or not you move. So now the game is not based on how much you kind of explore the map because the, the idea behind the threat level is that when you do an action, part of it goes up. When the full thing gets, when the bar gets full, the threat level goes up. When the threat level goes up, crazy things happen. Uh, like firewalls or extra enemies or things like that and uh, this is kind of something we borrowed from uh, Invisible Ink a little bit because I really like the way that that game system worked uh, but we had to modify it a little bit to work with this game and originally it mattered how much you moved so every move your your threat level bar went up and then every when the threat level bar was full uh, a new threat level you went up a threat level so uh, that worked okay, but that discouraged exploration. And you got to be very careful design ways in a game when you discourage exploration. So that's really, really important. Now, one of the things you can see that I'm messing with here is uh, making view ranges this like yellow caution uh, style. Uh, I went back and forth on this because again, it's really important to me that people know what's going on in a game. So I'm trying a bunch of stuff to uh, help people figure out what's going on. And this seems to work better than like the, the pink tiles did because you can kind of tell what's going on and like, and when you have an overlapping tile, it turns red. So you kind of get that, but it's still a little weird to look at. Another thing that you notice too, is like when you get hit, the whole background flashes red, uh, that I think makes it feel pretty juicy. It's got some other problems with it for sure. But that was one of the things we added just to, cause it was, you weren't really telling when you were getting hit. Uh, and I went back and forth between the the colored tiles and the um, the caution tiles, and I I just I don't know. I think I think honestly I think part of the design choice here is this whole aesthetic issue. Um, I I wouldn't consider myself an artist, but I've done all the art myself, and uh, I'm I want so so the threat level just went up there as you can see, uh, which is uh, scary, but. Um, Anyway, like I want this game to look good, and the problem is like when I implement something that may be functional, but it doesn't look good, it doesn't fit well with the game, and even though I shouldn't be worried about aesthetics now, I should be worried about the mechanics and making it work. Um, it's, it's just one of those things that's kind of important to me, right? Like I need the game to look interesting, otherwise it just, it doesn't feel right to me. Uh, so I don't know, I, I don't know if it's an aesthetic problem or if it's a... Uh, some other sort of issue I'm trying to figure it out uh, I'm also trying to solve this kind of issue of um, if you notice the view range now isn't a big square it's a um, it has a line of sight to it so it is very different and I'm playing with the idea of line of sight so right here in that footage it's very it's just a giant circle right but if you add line of sight to the player, that's a whole nother thing uh, on top of that because we're playing with the enemy sights. And here I'm testing out the, the actual view cones. Like what if we what if we don't use tiles, but we use the actual view cones like most stealth games do? But that aesthetically was having issues too. And, and that brought up the whole problem of directional enemies. I realized that my art is not directional. Uh, and that has to do with the way the original game functioned is none of the enemies required directional sprites, left, right, up, down, that kind of thing because it was kind of like top down and there were more abstract versions representing things. But if they've got view cones, suddenly they have directions, right? They're facing directions because that was another thing that I noticed with my earlier system was that the, some of these view cones and view squares were like, um, 
squares like they could see in 360 degrees which is kind of weird for a stealth game like why would you have an enemy that could see 360 like i guess okay maybe that makes sense for one enemy but the all the enemies have the same view range and it's 360 degrees like what what so i don't understand what i'm thinking sometimes i just i'm trying stuff and that's one of the problems with being a solo developer too is like it's <laughs> It's so easy to get lost, man. You could lose clarity. Like, I can consider myself the best designer ever, but like, when you're in the middle of it, you do some dumb shit just because you don't have the clarity to see what you're doing is uh, is different. So it's a constant struggle, I think. And I'm just, I'm sort of iterating, trying to make the game the best it can be with the people uh, that are playing it. And I, I went with this view range uh, just to see if that was better. Again, I think functionally I was happy with it. Aesthetically, I wasn't happy with it. Um, we couldn't make it look right. Transparent red looked kind of weird. Uh, I think it was too much color clash. And then on top of that, like the direct without the directional art, it kind of was messed up. But functionally, I think it worked better than the tiles. So we ended up going back with the tiles and then I started uh, planning out how the inventory was going to work because the inventory was a big part of this too and I wanted to kind of mock it all up uh, because it's one of those things that like I honestly I think there's so many problems with the game at this point that I'm just like trying to fix a thousand things with like the capacity to fix four and so that's why I'm kind of hopping around too because people are playtesting builds as well and they're giving me this feedback and then they give me specific feedback that I'm thinking about and I'm like okay well let me let me do that let me fix that let me and then you know it's it's just it's one of those problems with not having a team like it's it's hard man um it's hard to to do stuff all yourself uh yo shit full delete thing <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm just mocking up the inventory and like how it's gonna work and I'm really thinking about design wise like okay If I have this item, how does it interact with this person if I have this ability and I'm here? How do I interact with it and where I'm also thinking about the progression system in a way because like okay What what are you gonna want to do? What are you gonna want to haul out of the game? Is it a loot game? Is it a uh, stealth game? Are you trying to destroy stuff? Are you trying to steal stuff like what? What is the core of the game at this point? And so we're going through a lot of issues like that, um, trying to figure out design wise, like where, where people see it and where I see it. And I'm trying to make the best game that I can, but at the same time, I'm trying to like filter out all of the noise because the problem when you get feedback from a bunch of different people too, is like, who do you listen to? And if you get two pieces of conflicting feedback, are either one of them valid? Are both of them valid? Um, yeah, how do you how do you solve those issues right uh do you tailor to a certain type of player do you not do you uh take breaks to look at swords of magic and stuff uh what do you do you know like how do you how do you decide these things and like honestly this game has kind of changed my life in a, in a way because like i used to think that game design was like a thing of just you're kind of searching for the perfect thing but like the more that i the more that I design stuff, the more that I realize that like game design is about the best trade-off, if that makes sense. Like, like it's not about the perfect thing, it's about the thing that has the least amount of negative consequences. <laughs> like, I don't think there's a such thing as a perfect thing anymore, you know? So you just gotta find the thing that works the best with the minimum amount of drawbacks or the thing that has the most synergy with what you're doing. Uh, and the thing about design decisions is a lot of them have uh, drawbacks, right? Like if you show the view range, but you don't show the tiles, it could be ambiguous because then you don't know if you step on a tile whether the person is gonna see you. But if you do show the tiles, but you don't show the view range, then it's easier to understand, but it's weirder to look at aesthetically. If you show both, it's too much, but it's a, it's good information as far as gameplay goes, but aesthetically it's it's ugly. There's there's just so many like trade-offs on like what the right option is uh, for these types, types of things. So like at the end of the day, I think you end up with not the best option, but the best option for you in that scenario, in this specific like thing. And I think it's important to recognize that it's okay to like not be 100% happy with the stuff that you develop if you believe that it's like kind of the best 
trade-off because even if there's no negative design trade-offs there's always a trade-off of like how long does it take to build how long does it take to design how long does it take to iterate and and fix you know so like <laughs> there's always that to think about too and in a thousand hour project which is what we're doing um it's important that we do things somewhat quickly so here you see i have both i have the the view range and the yellow tiles and both of them together again they create a very distinct mechanical picture of what's going on okay view range gives you the affordance of this is uh, a thing that i want to avoid the yellow caution tiles tell you specifically which tiles are are um, inaccessible but together aesthetically i think it's too much it doesn't look good and it one of them alone doesn't cover the full spectrum of what I need to teach the player. Like a view range view range shows them, okay, this is where it is. But like some of the view ranges, unless I make them like very squarish, which again would just be doing tiles, unless I do that, they don't show you everywhere you might get touched or everywhere you might get uh, seen in the game. So the tiles do that very specifically and they tell you very specifically which tiles are affected and which tiles are not. And mechanically, I think it makes more sense in a tile-based, grid-based game to have some kind of visual indicator on the tiles versus like a view range. So it's a trade-off back and forth. Don't know which one I'm gonna go with, to be completely honest. Um, I think I'm gonna try to maybe aesthetically make it look a little bit better if, if we can manage to do both. Uh, possibly we can, possibly we, I don't know, it may not just make sense for what we're trying to do but um you know it is what it is if you listen if you like this game if you want to be a part of it i stream development of it twice a week uh thursdays and fridays at 3 p.m eastern you can hit me up on my twitch channel and come uh visit it i eventually took out the view range because i was just like it's too much it's too much i can teach the player yellow caution tiles equals bad i think i could do that uh i just I don't know, I wanted the view range. I, I wanted it so much, but um, yeah, if you wanna be part of the development stream live, you can do that uh, by heading over to twitch.tv slash Tim Russell. The link will be down below. If you wanna follow the game, the best way to do that is the Skullbox Studios Discord channel, which is a separate Discord than Game Dev Underground, which is the game dev community that I run. It's a, it's a Discord specifically for my games and my projects, and I would love to have you there. You can test builds out, you can play with everybody, you can discuss it, uh, and we can uh, make some changes that way but um you know what that's where i'm gonna leave you that's where we're gonna leave off my name is jim russwick and i will see you again in the next video thank you very much for watching and following the project